Hey guys, we're back. This is going to be the third part of the crossover series for the Overnight Sensation. Now this is just to teach you basically how to build this crossover or any other crossover and how to read the schematic. Hopefully you've watched the first video which shows you how to read it and the second video which shows you one of the better ways to line everything up. This third video will show you how everything is actually connected. Um, so here's what we have set up. We have two completed boards, one from the overhead view and one from the underhead view, and we have the schematic here. The reason why we do this is so that you can see that we did the mirror image of the schematic up top, and then down below we'll give you this particular image so we can see exactly where the wires connected, why they connected, why we have some insulated wires, why we don't, um, and we're going to go from there. Now you'll notice on my board there's three colored wires. There's yellow, there's blue, and there's white. We're going to explain why there's three colored wires. If you wanted to have all these wires the same color they could be, I've done this mainly for you to help and for diagnostic reasons. I always think it's best to, to change the wires so you can go back and, and look and see how you, how you did or didn't do or where you may have messed up. So let's follow where everything is. If you see, these are my positive and negative. My negative is going to be blue and my positive is going to be yellow. According to this diagram, we should have a negative wire that connects three different pieces. It should connect the capacitor 6.8, it should connect the resistor and the inductor, and then there should also be one wire coming from all those soldered together and going to the ground above, which would be right here. This will be the ground above. And this is the beginning of it. That's, that's the ground from the bottom, or this negative right here. Now, if you take a look from the bottom, we have this wire, and it's soldered to the 6.8 volt cap, which is that wire right there. So you see it's that very thin one. And then this is the inductor. Now remember we use the outside portion of the inductor as per the diagram. It shows the outside, not the inside. And we also have the 10 ohm. I'm sorry, this is the 10 ohm. The 6.8 is underneath. You can't actually see the 6.8. It's underneath there. Those are all soldered together with this blue cable. And once again, we chose this blue cable because we knew it was going to cross this so we use an insulated wire so that two bare wires wouldn't be touching because if so then they would be conducting with each other and that would not be good so we chose the insulation so that it would not conduct so there we go that is a perfect match according to the overnight sensation now let's take a look at the positive the positive is this yellow according to the diagram we should have the positive hitting the capacitor 22 uf and the middle of the inductor those all three should connect. So how did I do that? I took the positive and I ran it over here. I'm sorry. The positive should touch the capacitor 22 UF to the capacitor 1.5 UF. And if you take a look, we went ahead and did that. And here is the connection. And then it's gonna follow and connect to the middle up here so if you take a look it connects here here and it also connects to here so we just minimized that by soldering all of them together in this point so we took the positive we soldered the capacitor 0.22 uf to the capacitor 1.5 here's the 1.5 here's the 0.22 uf we soldered those together we used another insulated wire because it was going to cross some other wires. We wanted to make sure that it wasn't going to be touching anything. And we brought that right over to the inductor. And all three of those match right here. Actually, it would be four leads. One lead from the inductor, one to the positive terminal, one from the 1.5 UF, and one from the 0.22 UF. Those are all soldered together. Now, if we take a look at the diagram, the next connection we want to do is a 0.2 UF. It's going to connect to the capacitor 6.8, and then it's gonna 
connect to the outside of the big inductor and then it's going to go to the woofer so if we take a look at this again here's the outside of the cap of the inductor here's the capacitor 0.22 uf the other side of it they're soldered together to this wire and along with the 6.8 uf and then we brought it over to the woofer and if you take a look there is the woofer over here and that's the reason why i changed these color coded woofer ne negative and tweeter tweeter is white the tweeter is up here i'm going to skip over to that one now if you notice this one did not have to be insulated so why did i insulate it the reason why i ran an insulated wire is because the resistor 10 ohm and the resistor 6 ohm could not match they just weren't long enough the cables weren't long enough and so i just soldered a short piece of wire and so i soldered soldered this particular wire here and then i ran the tweeter cable out here which on the board is right here that's just it's a very short wire and it's connected to these terminals once again you don't have to have these terminals if you wanted to keep these as just bare wires that ran straight to the speaker you could you could run this yellow directly to the woofer you could run this uh, you'd have to split this negative but you could wire cap this negative and split it to the two different speakers and then run this to the tweeter um, you're starting to get the idea of what what all we did the resistor 6 ohm to the cap 22 uf you take a look at it that's what we did we just took those two wires and we soldered them together um, this one is kind of tricky so i'm going to explain this one to you because it can be confusing especially to a new beginner the middle of this inductor is supposed to connect to this capacitor 1.5 uf and make sure it doesn't touch the woofer unless it's insulated and so we once again insulated the woofer cable so that wouldn't happen so that those would not accidentally connect and then you're supposed to connect to the capacitor 2.2 uf now if you have it laid out the way like i have it laid out on this board one of the things you'll notice is that the capacitor 1.5 and 2.2 UF and the L1 are all long enough to connect right together. And that's what we did. We just connected them all together and soldered them in one point. They don't have to look exactly like this picture. This picture kind of shows it as you going to one point and then jumping to another point. It doesn't matter. If you want to meet them all at the capacitor 1.5 UF and solder them all right there, which is what I did, that's what you're going to do. So you're going to run the capacitor 2.2 to the 1.5. You're going to run the L1 to the 1.5, just like we did here. See, here's the little 1.5. There's the inductor, and there's the capacitor, 2.2 uh, UF. They're both being wired right there, and then just one solder joint. It makes it very easy, very simple, and you're finished. To be honest, it really doesn't take very long to solder these boards. Uh, if you are confused about what these holes are for, I will tell you about these. These holes are just for screws later, um, and they're going to be using a little nylon spacer when they go into the box so that uh, so that they won't damage anything. Uh, minus these two holes. These are for the positive and negative cables when they come off the amplifier. And that would be positive and negative left and positive and negative right speaker. Now, it's that simple. If you can make this look like this at the end and this you'll have an overnight sensation tweeter that works perfectly fine um, and you'll have some speakers that sound really great if you have any questions like i said below just leave them in the comments and we'll see if we can answer them thanks